we're learning how to draw molecules using bond line notation <coughs> with some nomenclature. In bond line notation, only the carbon skeleton of the molecule is drawn. So if we take, for example, decane, which is part of a homologous series of the simplest alkanes, starting from methane. So we have methane, ethane, propane, butane, pentane, hexane, heptane, octane, nonane, decane is 10 carbon atoms. If we were to draw all the hydrogen atoms, we would have three on the terminal ends and two on each interior carbon atom. But to simplify the drawing, all of that is left out. It's assumed to be there, but it's left out for simplicity. We also observe that decane is normally drawn in a straight line, but it can be like this. If the molecules are the mobile, the, the bonds between carbon atoms are completely mobile, so the chain is completely floppy. But typically, we'll draw it in a straight line. I have an example here of N hexane. N stands for normal meaning that it's the saturated alkane, the simplest form of carbon-6, with, uh, with the formula C6H14. When it's saturated, fully saturated, it has the maximum number of hydrogen atoms in there. If we were to take hexane and join these two ends, we would get cyclohexane, and the prefix cyclo is added whenever a molecule is cyclic. If we add substituents, here you might be tempted to call this methane cyclohexane, but whenever you add a substituent, you drop the ane ending and substitute it with YL, eel. So you'd say, instead of methane cyclohexane, you'd say methyl cyclohexane. Here we have another example with the cyclohexane um, skeleton. We've added an ethyl group, so we call it ethyl cyclohexane. Sometimes you might see one ethyl cyclohexane, but if it's a substituent, if there's only one substituent on the whole ring, then we can dispense with writing the one, and it's understood that there's only one substituent, and wherever it is, is the first position. Not so with straight chain alkanes, because with a straight chain alkane, if you have a substituent, you have to specify what position it's in. So in this case, we have two methyl, uh, two methyl hexane. If we had put the methyl group here, then it would be called three methyl hexane. Each substituent gets a number. Notice how you put a dash before the uh, uh, where the number is going to where the substituent is going to appear to separate it from what it's identifying. If you have, for example, two methyl groups on a, on a molecule, then each one gets its own number. So one, two, dimethyl, and you say di because there's two of these, and you use the following Greek prefixes to designate how many there are: di for two, tri for three, tetra for four penta for 5 and hexa for 6. So this is called 1,2-dimethyl. 1,2, these, the, these are the methyl groups. Dimethyl because there's two of them. Cyclo because the molecule is cyclic. And hexane because there are six carbon atoms in it. This molecule is called 1,2,3-trimethylcyclopentane because there are three methyl group substituents on a cyclic pentane. So 1,2,3-trimethyl cyclopentane. And the last example, we have six identical substituents, all the methyl groups. Again, the numbering is such that you try to get the lowest possible numbering to all the substituents. They're all equal, so we can we can write them all uh, from left to right, or you could even name it 1, 2, 3, but it would still end up being the same, name, the same name. 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, each number separated by a comma, dash, hexa, to show that there's six, methyl cyclopentane. The last example, we have three different substituents on a cyclohexane. And the one added rule to that is that you, you alphabetize the names of the substituents. There's a, a methyl group, a propyl group, and an ethyl group. Ethyl starts with E, so we're going to place it first, even though it's at the third position. How did we establish that it was a third position? You number them according to weight. The heaviest one gets the lowest number, and then you continue the numbering either clockwise or anti-clockwise, however it gives you the lowest numbering scheme. If I was to number it this way, uh, it would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and the ethyl group would get a 5, so we know that it has to, we have to go the other way, so it gives lower numbers. So we would call this 3-ethyl, alphabetizing the E first, 2-methyl, because M comes before P, 1-propyl, which is the propyl group, 
cyclo because it's uh, cyclic, hexane because it has six carbon atoms.